welcome back to another episode on the channel and thank you so much for stopping by. As you guys can see right behind me, we have the Victory Max. We call it Victory Max because we are going to send this thing to the body shop as well as the box to get it painted Victory Red. Guys, this is a really huge deal. We're resurrecting this truck from the grave, seriously. So today I'm here at Kodiak Truck in North Prairie, Wisconsin. Most of you guys know Mark from the channel. And we have a huge upgrade going on with this build right now. We're gonna document it, guys. Make sure you stay tuned. This is gonna be really awesome. So this is where the magic happens. Guys, we've done videos upon videos, countless videos, on how to rebuild uh, front differentials, how to build, of course, transfer cases, and these things are legendary, let me tell you what. As well as the Allison six-speed, which most of you guys watched that video on how to rebuild an Allison six-speed for a Duramax. So today we're not gonna be documenting exactly how to rebuild these things. But what I would be more interested in, since we only paid $1,000 for this truck, what kind of carnage is going on with these two units? But more importantly, watch till the end of the video because we will have this thing beautiful, painted, remanufactured. Guys, seriously, you're really missing the boat if you guys run a Duramax Power Stroke or Cummins or just a, anything in the light duty, medium duty pickup trucks and you guys do not have a transfer case for Mark, make sure you guys go on his website. I'll also leave that link in the description below. And he set me up with a coupon code TRUCKMASTER. It's gonna save you 98% on everything. I'm just kidding. What do we have today? All right, so this is our case out of the uh, Victory Max. And as you guys can see, the case was already rebuilt one time. This tag here, you can see who remanufactured this unit. A couple things I don't really like about these units are this. A, we used the magnesium rear over again. Magnesium alloy casted right into here. Um, do not like these magnesium rears. Obviously, there's a failure with them. On almost every one of these remands that have come through here as cores, this is what we end up with. If we're popping our rubber plug out. You can see there's a threaded sleeve down in here. So instead of just taking this housing, throwing it away, putting a new housing on, they've machined this. They've run threads down in there and they put the sleeve in. The problem is the sleeve backs off opens up the end play in the back of the case and you'll have problems. Also, if you look closely right here at the tip of the screwdriver, if you look, this case pump rubbed. There's JB Weld or a metal epoxy or something on there that they patch this with, again, to use the housing over. Our philosophy here is throw the magnesium housing array. Put a new aluminum rear case half on and be done with it. Um, I'm not a big fan of this. I've seen some of the early ones that had the threaded sleeve as I say, back off. Then they went to a version where they had a threaded sleeve and they drilled it and put a roll pin in to keep it from spinning. Every one of those I've seen has broken the roll pin and it, and it came unhinged again. So again, we're gonna show you the difference when we get this apart. You'll see this is one of our brand new aluminum rears. There's no threaded sleeve down in here. I'm sticking my fingers right through here. Here we got a threaded sleeve. All ours has is a snap ring groove with a brand new bearing bore and the whole deal. Um, so we're going to get this thing apart, we're going to go through this whole case, we're going to have fun with this, we're going to see what's in here, what's hurt, what's not hurt, what they did on their remand compared to what I do on mine, and we'll explain it as we go on some of this stuff. We've got our front diff, our nine and a quarter IFS front pumpkin. Um, again, we're going to knock this down, go through it. I don't believe anybody's ever touched this. Um, I can already tell just by grabbing a hold of this thing and turning the yoke that we have pinion bearing issues. Um, basically, when you grab a hold of this, and this is the rule of thumb for any differential, I don't care what it is, as you grab this and put pressure on and you try to turn this, I'm pushing pretty hard, and then all of a sudden it'll just break free, and you'll feel that. And then all of a sudden you can just spin it real easily. It'll go, it'll go like crazy. You can just spin it no problem. That's failed pinion bearings. It should never take more pressure to start the rotation of the yoke than to maintain that speed. If it does, you have hurt pinion bearings or an over torqued pinion nut. Somebody might have put a pinion seal in here at one time and over tightened it. Who knows what, but again, we're gonna open this thing up and we're gonna go through it. Um, I know you guys seen many videos on this, but we're just gonna make sure all these pieces that are going back in Victory Max are completely gone through and done right. So first impression, um, yeah, typical, Low quality rebuild. That is my opinion, and I'll explain why. I told you guys about the sleeve. There we can see it right there, right now. 
These sleeves, they tend to not work the best. Also, if you look, you can see all the corners have been JB welded up or epoxied or something, some type of metal epoxy they've put in there. Uh, again, that it's just a poor, poor way of going about it. They've got their updated clip in here. I've seen plenty of these break. All they did with this was change the location of the clip. Instead of being in the bore of the case and in here, they moved it and clipped it under the oil pump. The problem being is it's the same thickness material and they break again. So it's not nothing I would ever want to put my name on, send out the door, whatever, but I guess when you're building a mass amount of transfer cases, they're more concerned with profit margins than quality. And that's, again, my opinion. I'm more concerned with quality because that's what our whole business is based on. Um, I can already see other issues going on in this case that we just took it apart. If you look down in here, this is our mode fork that engages four-wheel drive. The blue plastic pads in here that they have off a 208 transfer case. We're going to get that fork out. We'll show you and we'll compare it to what, what our new forks look like, which is going to end up going in here. We're not running any of that garbage over. So we'll finish tearing the rest of this down and you'll, we'll show you step by step what we got and lay it all out and then decide what pieces are gone and what we're using and show you the finished product. All right, guys. We got our mode fork out, um, kind of what I suspected. These pads that come off here are basically used on a 208, 241, 243 case back in the 80s and 90s. What happens is when these things burn the plastic off, some manufacturers don't want to throw this fork away, which to me is silly because the fork's not that expensive. And they grind all the plastic back off these. They drill out the holes, they get all the plastic off, then they use these pads. But if you look, the pad's not fully supported based on what we got going on here. Out on the end of the plastic on each side by a good 3 eighths of an inch, there's no support there. We would never use this. This is our brand new fork that we will put in this case. If you look, this whole thing is injection molded plastic, both sides. This is an OE design. This is obviously whoever rebuilt this. The other issue we have with this case is, is whoever tore this apart initially, they overspread the snap ring. If you look down in there, you see the spread on that. That spread is too wide. That thing should be closed down further. On spinning this and looking at this, this whole snap ring's hanging out here. It belongs back in further. So when somebody took this apart, they just jammed the snap ring pliers on there and blasted that thing apart as wide as they could. You really need to finesse this stuff when you take it apart. So that snap ring's gonna be junk too. Our slop on our bearing bore is not bad. This was probably a new front housing with a few new pieces in here. Um, not you know, like I say, not, not a horrible, horrible situation what we got going on here. We got lots of usable parts, which is good. They just put some very questionable parts back in it that I don't like. Um, so we're going to go down and uh, go ahead and, and clean everything and get everything washed in the hot tank, the housing chain. We'll inspect that. Everything else, we're going to check that for slop. And we'll show you that maybe a little later, too. So when that short side axle steer shaft gets stuck, we designed this tool. Ryan manufactures this tool here, and basically what we do is we just pull a long side tube off, we drop it down through here, and uh, we give this thing a smack and the axle will come right out. It'll destroy the snap ring, but we're not worried about that. Nope, drove it right out. All right, if you see now, guys, the tool's still in there, and it drove the axle out that far, and now at this point we can come in and we can tap this out. And you can see that our snap ring groove now, the snap ring's broke, there's a chunk of it in there, stuck in, whatever. We'll get in here and what we're going to do is we're going to take the grinder and we're going to flare this opening back on both sides and recut that snap ring groove a little different. And then next time you won't have to do this to take it in and out. So there you see that tool came down and butted right up against that axle shaft and drove it out. And uh, that's basically what this thing was designed to do. Uh, Ryan sells these on his website. Okay, so as you guys can tell, we have everything remanufactured. Uh, beautiful looking, actually. We have a red and a glossy black. This is going to look really great for the old Victory Max. 
So I guess the biggest question I have for you was, does this actually need, since you're already in there, was there anything that you needed to address? Did this actually have to get rebuilt? It, it was a working case. There was nothing wrong with it. It's just it wasn't a good quality rebuild, in my opinion. Like I say, some of the stuff you, that they did, we showed in the video, the, the removable pads, that uh, that's not nothing that we would ever do in a case. But we've got our new aluminum rear housing on. We got rid of that housing that had the JB weld and the beautiful little threaded ring in. and. Um, Basically, all new bearings, all new seals. We replaced that fork, put our rollerized main shaft in, all that stuff, and everything else. So she's good to go, just like every unit we sell. I actually run this exact transfer case in my LBZ Duramax, my 2007 Silverado 6.6 liter, and I've never had a problem. Absolutely stout units. So what's going on with this front differential? I know we didn't yep. do a lot of documentation, but... Guys, we basically rebuilt it and uh, cleaned all the parts and made it new again. Yeah, we went through the differential. Um, the pinion bearings were definitely out of it. Um, as we showed with the pressure that you could, we demonstrated how it took more pressure to start the rotation than to maintain it. So we did full bearings in the thing. We completely disassembled everything, hot tanked it all. Um, all new seals, all new bearings. The ring and pinion look beautiful. The internals look good. You obviously seen the axle shaft stuck in there. We knocked that out. We go in, we tune up that axle shaft, clean up the splines, put a new snap ring on. Um, the only thing we got left to do is just put our actuator in, which we're going to clean up and do, but um, it's ready to go. Awesome. And so now that we have the driveline documented on the Victory Max, we will be next diving into, of course, the frame as well as, we're not done yet, guys, the transmission. We'll address that. Uh, we'll be doing a transmission rebuild video for a Allison 5-speed. The last video that we did post on uh, the transmission related video was an Allison six speed. So it's going to be pretty interesting. I'm hoping to at least hit 550, 600 horsepower mild in this build right here. Nothing too crazy, but enough to still kind of put you in your seat. I need you guys to stay tuned, continue to watch, hit that notification bell. Do not miss a video. Before I end this video today, guys, I'm going to give a huge shout out to Mark here at Kodiak Truck. Make sure you use my coupon code TRUCKMASTER at the KodiakTruck.com website. I'll leave all of his information in the description below. By far the best of the best in the industry, in my opinion. Do appreciate your time as always. We'll see you on the next video. Stay tuned.